Hello. How's everyone? Hello, hello. How's everyone? Hey, doing Thank great you today. For us. Thank you for joining us. This is three at three. Uh, today we have Dalton, uh, Joe, Aaron, myself, Jamil Medina, uh, work at Data Meaning, and I'm a consultant. I'm a principal consultant on Data Meaning, and Aaron, too. We work together there as another consultant on Data Meaning. And we have here Dalton and Joe. Dalton, tell me a little bit about yourself and for, for all this audience here today. Hey, Jimmy and Aaron, I appreciate you having me on the show. You've got you've got some great content, and it's something that's really near and dear to my heart. Uh, and especially today, having a healthcare show. I've been in the healthcare field, uh, looking at data for going on 20 years now, uh, just part of a 37-year career handling data. Wow. Um, I work uh, for the company Click, which I'm sure you know ha offers visualization and analytics. And I am a data cathedral architect with the company. So what is that? What, what is that uh, to be a data cathedral? I never heard that before. What is <laughs> I'm that? glad you asked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so imagine, if you will, an elderly woman walking through a small town. And she comes across a, a new construction site right in the middle of town. So she walks up to the first laborer and says, hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And the laborer pulls out their AirPods and they look up clearly disgusted and are like, I'm laying bricks. <laughs> and she apologizes for interrupting them, goes to the next laborer and says, hey, what are you doing? Uh, I'm building a wall, lady. It's going to be 100 feet wide, 30 feet high. And, you know, we're two hours into the project. I'm already eight days behind. I need to get back to work. Again, she apologizes, moves on to the last, to the next laborer she sees. Ask this laborer stands up, wipes all the dust off their overhauls, and says, "We're just starting construction of what is going to be the world's most amazing cathedral. <laughs> People are going to travel around the world to see this." The reason I use this story is because all of those laborers have mm -hmm. the same thing on their business card. Hi, I'm Dalton. I lay bricks for a living. <laughs> the difference is what's between their ears and what they perceive that they're doing for the world. Oftentimes with data, I encounter people who have been beaten up by managers, beaten up with colleagues, and their whole MO every morning when they force themselves to get out of bed, they drag themselves into work is, Aaron asked me to do another stinking report. <laughs> Joe asked me to build another visualization and he's just going to change it tomorrow anyway. And it's just a, a quick reminder to people that what we do with data really does matter. Yes. And I know you've got something special you're going to say about that here shortly for our topic today. But just as a reminder, everybody, I really want to challenge you. Mm -hmm. Dig deep to what you believed in and what you loved. Exactly. about working with data or visuals early on in your career and find that person again and hopefully you'll consider yourselves a data cathedral architect soon awesome love it thank <laughs> you thank you for that so joe tell me a little bit about yourself yeah why why do i have to go second <laughs> <laughs> so i've been working with this guy for i don't even know how many years now but uh it's always a pleasure to work with the click door and I too, uh, you know, came from Click. I worked on the healthcare team for many years, and now I'm at Bizlib, which is an analytics company that works very closely with Click. We're a leading partner with them, and uh, you know, I got my start actually before Click at a healthcare software company. I was part of the problem. I like to say we generated so much data in the mm -hmm. EHR, the electronic health record, and uh, you know that company. There, there's a couple of them in the U.S. that are massive and maybe half of the U.S. population is on these types of systems. So all this data gets collected. What are you going to do with it? And that was been my job for uh, the last 15 years or so is working with that data, trying to bring light to it. And we often would say things like, um, you know, healthcare companies are, are, are data rich, but mm -hmm. really information poor. So how do we take that data, make good insights out of it, take action on it? So it's not just a replication of what you had on paper. We don't need a fax machine anymore. 
uh, we need to be able to move this stuff quickly and then do big population health type of projects where it helps that we have a million patients in the system. We want to figure stuff out. So that's the stuff that I've been passionate about for many, many years. Got to work with Dalton on, on many different projects over time and stumble upon all kinds of things where data is dirty. There's no way you're never going to be able to clean it, especially healthcare data, because it's human beings putting this stuff in and, and stuff changes. So uh, I have fun with all this and the visualization side is just something you can feel instead of rows and tables of data. Um, that's uh, what I really love to do. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having Thank me. You. I want to like uh, help, you know, get the audience in, into this um, idea of what are we doing healthcare data today at, you know, this show three at three, you know, one of the things that I feel is that this data is so important because I was talking with uh, everyone before uh, we started today about, you know, this data with this data, knowing how to visualize this data better, we can all save lives. You know, we're talking about COVID-19, first responders, but if we provide people like a doctor, a nurse, uh, the police department, you know, better data, a firefighter, we can all save lives. And that's what we're doing this today. That's the why of today's meeting of why are we here? What are we bringing, you know, Dalton, Joe, uh, Aaron, myself, because we want you to do better at this. Because that way, if we do better, right, about data visualization and learn how to do this better, we can all save lives. We can all add to it. We can all add our little thing here or there to make it better. And that's why we're here today. So if you're the first time that you're watching this show, please know every one of us have a data visualization that none of us have seen before. It's a mystery show, right? Like a mystery data visualization. The idea is for you to look at this data visualization for the first time. You can comment in the chat and we're going to have three different questions, right? It's going to be like, hey, is, do you understand what is happening here? Is there any insights? Is there anything that is confusing? And at the end, how can we make it better? And by the end, we hope that we have we're going to have different perspectives. We're going to see things you have never seen before. And I have my glasses here already because my visualization will burn your eyes right, right away. So I'm going to get my visualization and three at three starts right now. Let's see. You guys ready? I'm ready. OK. You take a deep breath. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. I told you're you. Right. I told you. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. We gotta grab these, right? You have is, to get it. You have to put it on. It's bright. Oh, oh, I understand this right now. Yeah. You have to you really put my monitor through its course too. <laughs> so this visualization, I'm not gonna say too much about it, but it's have to do with COVID, right? And um, I found it uh, on a site that I cannot pronounce here too much, but it's a. Uh, well, I cannot pronounce it, and I want to do that here, but it's a data visualization site that provides you with many data visualizations that are very, like I would say, crazy, or what are they did this or that. And what we can do, I was thinking, um, Joe, do you want to go first? And do you think that you want to go first? You would prefer they okay. to go first. Yeah. You I'll go, go first? Right. I love this stuff. We often have to figure out what's going on and uh, in a chart and kind of take it apart. And maybe there's a better choice. So immediately my eye went to, well, of course, the like the spaghetti mess that is this tornado or hurricane that people are calling it. And I'm like, okay, I immediately go and start reading the axes. So do I want to be on the left side or the right side of this? The increase or decrease in deaths per day um, you, you know, you don't want to be to the right of this. So I think that's actually kind of clever. And then I'm having to tilt my head to figure out what we're doing on the Y axis, the average number of deaths per day on that date. So, uh, on that date, the day before, or after that one, I'm still going to need a little bit of time to deconstruct. How did we get to this? Mm -hmm. Other than this line is taking us through time mm -hmm. and you're either dipping or diving back and forth. So it's clever. I think there's there's a lot going on here. I wish it were interactive. I do want to like hover over something, right? Mm -hmm. Say like, what's going on with the Germany? They seem to be like circling, and then they're just gone. They don't have COVID anymore. Yeah, um, it's, yeah. It's, it's not it's, um, it's not as bad as I thought. You know. 
So the chart doesn't have a title, Erica. It's just actually called increase or decrease in death per day. I couldn't find a title, yeah. um, but for it, but it's um, it's it's a, yeah, it's one that I mean I, I think there's a lot of here that it's uh, going on, right? That was the idea for me to bring it in, and um, but I, I honestly myself have a hard time to to understand it. Um, so Dalton, did you have anything anything that you wanted to say about this incredible chart? First, um, coming from the Midwest, it definitely reminded me of a tornado. I can certainly understand. I'm guessing from the like the uh, coasters, the idea that it's a hurricane looking visualization. Um, I think it definitely represents healthcare data very well, in that it is very messy, <laughs> and there's an awful lot of data points. And would like to say, can't you just make that a bar chart? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> um, you know, it would be probably as messy as a bar chart if, if you were looking over time um, and trying to plot the dates. Um, the, the second thing I think it does is it gets people to be engaged because you're either immediately just going to tune out or you're really going to dig into that. And, and mm -hmm. as Joe said, if it were interactive and I could click on USA or mm -hmm. France or Spain to kind of narrow down mm -hmm. what I'm seeing, that would be great. Um, but I definitely believe that the more we can get the end user engaged mm -hmm. in getting to come into their own story from the data, mm -hmm. the better the likelihood that they're actually going to take action on that data versus if I just showed them a KPI that had my story of what I wanted them to know, I may not get that action that I was hoping for. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, so for me, you know, when, when I look at it, you know, I like, what do I like? I like the annotations, right? The annotations that are around and they're, they're not horrible or anything, but of course it's messy when you're putting all this together, all these mm -hmm. lines, like everybody said in the chat, it looks like a hurricane or like a tornado or like a tornado, I'm sorry. And it's, it's just too much right uh, together. It's not interactive. Actually, I agree with Delton. I mean, Actually, it's not interactive. When I found it, it was just an image. Um, I don't think it's interactive. So it's actually, it, it's very confusing. I mean, it's super confusing. Um, it's just too many colors. And, um, you know, it, it's definitely something that you want to recreate uh, to make it better. Um, something that is hard to understand sometimes here is all those little dots that are white. I think those are things that happen or it's just the dates specific dates through the line, correct? What do you think, Joe? Yeah, it kind of looks like it's it's the point in time. And if you were to, uh, Dalton and I would talk about this all the time. Do you get your ruler out and you start measuring how far this thing is from something else? <laughs> do they line up? Are we 100 points from the beginning of this uh, hurricane tornado? I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm now seeing that kind of wraps back. And I saw a comment come in about, you know, it takes more than five minutes to understand it. It defeats the purpose. Uh, on the other side, I'd argue like this is this is more than a thousand words for a picture, right? That they would mm -hmm. say this is a whole story in here yeah. that could probably, you know, it would be a front page of a of a major article uh, or a major mm -hmm. publication, and you don't need anything else. You're just sitting here reading this for an hour. Mm -hmm. so well, I think I, I think that to, to piggyback onto Joe's comment about mm -hmm. it could be a whole story in itself mm -hmm. um, goes back to Eric's, Erica's question: Does it have a title? Mm -hmm. um, because I think the title mm -hmm. would have had what the what the story direction should be, so that I know what the story is about, at least from the author's perspective. Um, mm -hmm. what are you trying to tell me so that I have at least a frame of reference? Like, oh, I get it now. Now let me continue interpreting with maybe my interpretation of what you've written with all this data. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It's, uh, definitely confusing. Um, Aaron says perhaps if, if there were less annotation, less colors, it may be easier to follow. Correct. So there's no doubt about that. I mean, it, it just, it's hard. It's really hard to focus your attention to something specific, right? Because if you were, if, if this was interactive and you're someone from the US, then you can select US. Or if you're one some from, from Italy, then you can select Italy, right? Something that relates to you to make it easy to understand. Um, 
That's a good point too. We, we often talked about this whenever we ran into uh, like massive data sets and we'd see aggregated data at like a country level is not that useful. And even down to state and then county. And so it's like, yeah, if you could select the USA one, mm -hmm. then it would break it into the tornado that is every state. But even mm -hmm. that is, you know, rife with all kinds of issues and going back and forth. So you must want to get down to what are the true outliers? You know, is there something mm -hmm. going on in this small town over here versus this one? And call those two out. So it really lends itself to wanting to be interactive. One of the things that I find interesting um, from, from the very get-go uh, mm -hmm. of the COVID situation, I only posted one video about COVID visualizations. Yeah. And my big thing that I tell people all the time is context is king. Mm -hmm. And I cannot possibly compare the magnitude of 100 deaths per day for the U.S. versus 75 deaths per day for a country that may have one millionth of our population. Right. Um, okay. But even knowing that, the thing that kind of jumps out there is it looks like France, um, which has a population far less than the U.S., mm -hmm. um, has actually had more deaths. So to me, that kind of jumps out as an outlier. Mm -hmm. But I would much rather see those numbers compared in context like death per million, deaths per 100,000, um, deaths per square mile is some type of a context mm -hmm. uh, that people don't have to then go look up that data or jump to some bad conclusions about it. All right. All right. Oh, correct. And you can see it's, it's hard to tell when you look at it at the beginning, but it, there is actually here on the left side, there's our negative, right? Like negative 200,000 or 150, I think they're in thousands, I'm not even sure. So, um, and these are negative and this is zero right here in the middle. So that's something that at the beginning I missed and I said, oh, wow, there are negative numbers here too. So it's, I don't know, it's a uh, very, it's more confusing than what I thought at the beginning. So I'm not trying to understand really what they're trying to do, but it says that is the increase or decrease in death per day. So the increase or decrease, that's maybe, you know, Kelly, kind of like they were trying to tell you here about, and then the, the dates all over the place. So if you go around, then what, what this probably means is that on this, this side, right on red, it went down, but it, it, it came back up or something like that. So that's what I'm thinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think there, you know, as we, you know, the whole point of the lockdowns was to, you know, bend the curve, you know, lower the curve, flatten the curve. Mm -hmm. and so I think this was a climb here, and then it was going down, and then it was climbing, and then it was going down. Correct. All right. Correct. Right. So, what can we make, or what any suggestions you have, Joe, to to maybe make it a little bit better? If you were going to recreate this or have an idea of like to do this a little bit better, of course, you said interactive. Anything else? You probably use a different chart, right, or something different to to work on this, right? Yeah, I think uh, Dalton mentioned this: the context. So. Mm -hmm. um, often we'll do things where a single chart might be the highlight but you often want things around it kind of know where you're zooming in on um so how many total deaths maybe there is some nice you know edges on the space on the side where we can put some of the bar charts so we know just pure volumes or mm -hmm. per capita type of thing um so to have a little bit more there but to pack it all into this one chart um uh, yeah, I don't. I just. I'm really curious how long it took this person to draw this up. Other than I have a three year old who uses my iPad occasionally, <laughs> draw this almost dead center with multiple mm -hmm. colors. So that's yeah. what it initially reminded me of. Yeah, there was someone in the chat that said that kid that kid did this. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> this was Andre Carvalho. He said a kid was messed up in with a we up with a bis or something. <laughs> It's not a future job. Yeah. So I think one of the things that we could do to improve this is one of the things I've been talking about a lot lately, which is augmented reality and virtual reality, because there's there's so many dimensions that we need to track. It makes it impossible in a two dimensional world. We, we can't track all these dimensions and. Chris, you know, mentioned adding a Z axis. So, you know, that third thing that would be three dimensional 
so that we could actually enter into it and then keep turning our head around and track the going up or going down. Um, so this is the type of data that I think really fits for delivering a story, whether it be at the boardroom level um, or to a user group um, mm -hmm. meeting on visualization, something that would really fit itself well to that virtual reality, augmented reality world, because we really have so many dimensions we're dealing with. Okay. One other, I mean, if we're stuck in this 2D world too, um, which we don't all have the virtual reality glasses yet, but I hear mm -hmm. there's more in store, is uh, it, it, this the visualization itself is pulling you off into a side, but then you have mm -hmm. to go back to the access. And I'd almost want like the good side and the bad side to be called out better. Okay. Maybe there is a case where the good is just uh, getting darker red or something like that, mm -hmm. the, or, or the bad is getting that way. So you know where you're at. It's getting worse. Oh, it's getting much better. And you yeah. can't see that unless you're you got your ruler out or you got that one zero access being um, that that point in the middle. Maybe I'm right. just reading it wrong, but um, I find myself like jumping out here and going, "How far from that zero point are they? How how worse has it gotten in France, for instance?" Right. Correct, correct. No, definitely. I mean, definitely this needs some help. You know, you, you definitely, you're probably going to have to do it like in, in two different ways, right? Like maybe two different visualizations. One that could be just, okay, when did it increase? When did it decrease? Because here there is also the aspect of the date uh, field, right? There is a date field here around yeah. the lines. We can see all these dates and we can take advantage of that if we could use it looking as a trend. So you have like a trend line that by country tells you, hey, this is it going up and when it was going up and then when it was going down. But in here, you cannot tell that it's just too hard to read. Right. You know, so and if anybody from the chat wants to add anything, just let us know. Um, anybody from the chat who wants to add any comments, more than welcome to, to add it here to the discussion. Anything else that you guys see that, uh, that you like or don't like or that you will do any final thought before before we go to the next one no no my okay. eyes are singed <laughs> <laughs> just want to get it out of the out of the way so let's um let's go for the next one um dalton let's show, show us your visualization uh tell us what you have let me just hold this one and oh okay all right are you seeing my screen okay yeah yeah we can see your screen okay so this is the second of the three at three today from dalton this is great so tell us a little bit about it what is it you that where, where you selected <laughs> so i i selected this because um i i think this represents mm -hmm. something that we've seen from a side of covid okay um, we assume that if if two people have a problem mm -hmm. and we treat them exactly the same we're going to get the same outcomes mm -hmm. um dealing with data you know in it we want processes do it the same do it the same do it the same and health literacy is something that's very seldom ever talked about okay. um, outside of the world of population health uh, which is something that Joe and I are both very big advocates for. And um, so health literacy, like data literacy, is mm. someone's ability to understand, in this case, their own health, their own, health. Okay. Their own treatment plans, their, their mm. own medications. And mm. when we look at this chart, um, we will talk about colors because <laughs> 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 I'm sure there's – People screaming right now, why Why do I use green for good and green for bad at the same time, right? Yeah. And I didn't use it, um, although I would use, you know, a shiny green. Um, yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about colors, but, but ignoring the colors, the basic concept is that not everyone understands what I might mean if I say you need to take your medication. I that see. does not have the same connotation to everybody. I might need to use a word like swallow instead. Okay. 
And, yeah. and for those like data alerts, they were like, what do you mean you can't understand a tornado chart? Sure, you should be able to understand a tornado <laughs> chart, right? Um, there's those that that chart makes total sense for, and we're looking at like, wow, my, I thought my data literacy was here. It's down here. Health literacy is the same way. Um, we say, hey, there's adverse effects of mm -hmm. this medication, this vaccine. Um, for some, we need to use the word harmful instead. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I think this is really poignant as a data visualization, a super simple one. We mm -hmm. will talk about colors and uh, style and effect, um, but I think it's really profound without worrying about the other three bars mm -hmm. um, and stacking. I think it's really profound that overall only 12% of adults across the country are proficient in understanding their own health. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important thing if we look at driving action for something, because clearly <laughs> that number's got to change. Yeah, we're yeah. in deep trouble, regardless whether it's COVID, mm -hmm. any other public health crisis, or simply diabetes. Wow. Okay. Amazing. So, Joe, Joe, what do you think? What, what What was your first impression when you look at this visualization? I yeah, no, I gravitated to uh, some of the percentages. And then was trying to figure out, yeah, where do we want to be? A proficient and intermediate, how far off is that? And it was just what you said right at the end, only 12% overall. You know, we want everybody to be in the top uh, proficient bar and we're lagging. So there's a little bit of that, you know, how bad is below basic uh, across the board? What does that mean? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm looking at that. The other thing is everything in healthcare is, it's really easy to do just a point in time. And mm -hmm. I would talk about this sometimes, like I don't go to the doctor that much or I hadn't at least previously. So I had one dot like on a chart for my doctor to look at mm -hmm. for my weight, my blood sugar content, all that stuff. And that, I mean, that's what they're making decision upon was the data. Right. I have more information on my phone, on my watch, you know, that type of stuff nowadays. So this point in time data is only so useful. I like to see it like, over time, but then we're getting into a completely different visualization, right? So, yeah, are we getting okay, better? Tornado chart of this. Yeah, we <laughs> can talk all the data. A hurricane tornado chart of it, and maybe then we'll uh, we'll see if it's improving or whatever. Um, yeah, there. I mean, there's a lot going on with with so few points here too. Yeah, I I, I think definitely you know the other. I wasn't sure if it was the other or it was the overall, right? But then that, that means that is this the overall Delton, like the one, the last one on the right? So it, it meant other races. So those other bars races. aren't okay. over time. Those bars are different races. And this okay. was one point in time mm -hmm. just back in 2003. Three. Okay. Um, and, and I'm quite sure the numbers have gotten worse. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> going to say, prove it. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is one point in time, mm -hmm. um, and they broke it down by race and then they just lumped all the other races together. Okay. Okay. So I, I think definitely, you know, we, we can start with the color because like you said, it's green everywhere and does the green is good or bad? I mean, it's, it's hard to, to tell here. The other thing that it's the, the one that it's white have those lines on it. What is the reason for that? We, we don't really need those lines across on the one that says 19, 33, 24, and 21. Uh, if the other ones don't have any lines on it, what do we have lines on the white color? I don't, I don't know. Um, then <clears throat> I think there's definitely some questions when you look at 21 and 24, you know, they're almost the same. So you may, you may want to like take this apart and make it uh, not really stack bars because it could be confusing mm -hmm. in some way. Um, at least they go to a hundred percent. So they go from zero to a hundred. That's a good thing. Um, but there's definitely, uh, some questions here of how you can make this better. Yeah. Joe, do you have anything? Um, it's just like taking this apart a little bit more. They might ask, I could see like a healthcare administrator saying, oh, well, that's great. Mm -hmm. But our population of patients is only, uh, we don't have a very large, you know, Latinx community. Uh, mm -hmm. how wide is that bar actually? Is it? as big of a problem as we think there are we going to need 20 people to work on that or just two 
And so it's mm -hmm. how wide are the bars? And I think that's a MECO chart when we're getting to stack bar charts and then the width kind of mm -hmm. may deviate. Mm -hmm. When you're getting into maybe more complicated data visualizations for people that just need to know, oh, we have an issue. Like, uh, And what we really need to concentrate on is we need to get everybody in basic and below basic at least mm -hmm. into intermediate. Um, so really call out the bad areas. Yeah. Also annotations. Okay, for example, when I look at this, I want to see how, how was the population here? Was this, is there any enough people that we can say that this data it's you know good data? Yeah. So how many was I mean, maybe this was uh, this will have to be a, a survey. I imagine that this is a survey. So what? How many people are we talking about here? I mean, how many people that when they did this? How many people were were here? Uh, also, it will be nice to know male and female. I would like to know that male and female too. So that's what we did to like survey uh, psychology and stuff. Yeah. Are, yeah. If we're surveying this population of patients, are mm -hmm. they even answering the survey in the right way or even participating? I totally mm -hmm. agree. Like the respondents there is is key. There's a whole you could take a PhD on just survey design, right? And mm -hmm. they're all over the place in healthcare. And you'll see a variety of questions where it's it's biased in one way, mm -hmm. unintentionally. But they just ask the question in such a way that it throws everything off. It skews it. People are making big decisions on this stuff too. Correct. Correct. So um, Aaron says the title is confusing. Race isn't the same thing as ethnicity, but they're mixed them here. Mm. There are people who identify as a mix of these races and ethnicities. Are they double counted here? Uh -huh. That makes that makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Th those are good <laughs> questions. I, I think that the one thing that really threw me with the chart, um, clearly for me, below basic would imply that there's a risk of these people mm -hmm. not having a healthy outcome due to a okay. lack of knowledge. Okay. And that is the alarming thing to me. The rest is filler to get to mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but the very bad and the good are both a shade of green. Okay. And yeah. Green typically always means good. Mm -hmm. Unless and you're in Japan, I think red is good and green is bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because the world's upside down, you know. <laughs> um, so that that was the really confusing thing to me is like. I get a, a shading thing, but I'm not sure why a shades of green were used for both extremes. That um, that, that was really weird to me. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that did make me think was the texture that they used for the lighter blue or white, however you may be seeing the screen. Um, but uh, it, it got me thinking, are there ways that we could use texture Mm -hmm. to represent some other dimension. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's what they imply here. They were just, you know, using a 1980s chart with textures <laughs> that they had or some software or something. Right. Um, but but I think it, it, it starts a good thing. Um, I was talking to a good friend um, from the UK just yesterday um, mm -hmm. about three-dimensional texturing and the fact that we could kind of go old school um, to represent difficulties, like a difficult terrain versus a smooth terrain, a shiny terrain versus a dull terrain. Um, so there's things that I think that at least it gets you thinking about, could you represent another dimension um, with a texture? I don't think that was the intent here at all. That's right. That's right. Okay. And is anything else? Uh, do, do we? Do you think that anybody that we can do to? Like, I mean, to make it better. You know, if you have to present this, definitely the color, right? Like the green color, I will just take out because also all well, the color blind individuals that could be out there. Um, we can change this color, and also, um, I mean, the size of the bars doesn't really represent anything. Like they're they're very wide, and they don't need to be that way. Um, and you can probably just take this apart and make it definitely so much better, easier with just regular um, bar charts. Um, but anything else that you can see that you can do, I mean, probably adding a trend or something if it's, mm -hmm. if it's available. So how is this uh, different race and initiative, uh, you know, trending through time? That could be another thing that you can add here. 
anything anything else that uh, Joe or, or Dalton that you think that we can make this better? Is that this uh, visualization? Yeah, I yeah. go ahead, Joe. One of the things I'm thinking is, um, you know, it's starting a conversation. If this mm -hmm. is the right way to to cut this up, and then that mm -hmm. action, how do we improve this stuff? And maybe it's um, another one of the big social determinants of health that we talk about. It's mm -hmm. not just your race and ethnicity, but the language you speak, your preferred language, that type of thing. And, and maybe there, you know, a, a particular population wants everything in Spanish and, um, you know, it's going to need some help there, but they're getting all of their, you know, after visit summaries printed out in English. They go mm -hmm. into the online portal if they have access to it. It's all in English. Mm -hmm. um, and they're having issues with that. And that small thing of having different languages available can be a hitch point. Right. You know, they're not going to have any health literacy if they just can't read it at all. Correct. So right. I, I kind of want to slice it up by different ways or have the ability to, you know, I, I, I really like exploring stuff, drilling into things, seeing it and turning it on an edge. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And that's, I didn't think the, the chart was... Um, something that Steve Wexler would be excited about. <laughs> Here's 18 ways to Sunday. Um, like Aaron mentioned in chat, a, a slope chart type thing to show it over time. Simplify that. Um, but I, I think it's great because if it gets you interested in asking those additional questions, it's done its job as a visualization in making you want to know more about the topic that the author was presenting um and at least in, in this case they were pretty clear with a title what they were trying to present mm -hmm. um, and they were honest in telling their story to you and then they present their story correct 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 okay no definitely i mean but for sure i mean uh, it, and like i said I, I would love for example for myself to look at it uh, with mm -hmm. uh, like male and female, the difference between uh, health literacy, uh, that will also be a good uh, thing to add here. Uh, Aaron said, good database should lead to further questions. It shouldn't be the end of the story, correct? Got so it. absolutely, absolutely. No, that's, this is a good one. I mean, for sure, this is something that, you know, we all need to look at and make better use of this because like we said at the beginning of the show, better health literacy could help and improve like saving more lives right so definitely that's another thing that we can look at it and i that. think if you look at the context of covid data mm -hmm. you are going to see every one of those things that was mentioned here uh, about age groups and race and mm -hmm. genders like mm -hmm. all of those things mm -hmm. we end up showing charts that just show outcomes of a state compared to a state huge difference in populations um, be between states. Mm -hmm. um, and yet these very factors are never talked about in the media, again, because things are just too complex. Yeah, correct, 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 correct. Do I need to stop sharing my screen or can Joe just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so Joe, show us your, I can, I can turn it off here. Uh, Don't Joe, you can surprise you me. Your... Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be like, uh, what do you, you call it? Like a seven dimensional chart that can give back massages. <laughs> used to say. I was like, I'm getting ready for something where we were going to have to twist the screen. Um, so no, I tried to keep it simple. Okay. Well, here we go. This one, um, I don't, I don't need to prep it at all. We'll see if we can uh, kind of figure out what we want to do with this one. Okay. So I think I just wow. shared it and then you throw it in there. Oh, nice. Oh, that warms my heart. He knows sand keys are my favorite. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely one of my favorite types of visualizations. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm happy to explain a little bit behind it. Um, this is two pronged because I'm currently working on a project like this. So I'm very eager to hear your feedback on how we can improve it. Okay. Hmm. Let me see. So this is, this is um, the age, the sex, the smoking status. Is that right? That's right. Primary yep. disease family. What is, what, what is the next one? Um, Comorbidity. So what um, what other diseases or conditions might this patient okay. have? Mm -hmm. Surgery candidate. And the first one is state of residence. Okay. That's really cool. Okay. You know what, what I like is it's interactive, right? I imagine, yeah. right? 
Yeah. So, so we want to see all CHF patients, people okay. who have heart disease. I can kind of see how it relates to other things or even, uh, okay. you know, dig into one of them there and then see how it, it changes up the sand. Yeah. Hi highlight that CHF again, Joe. Look, go back with it. Yeah. Yeah. Might be a little bit of a delay. I'm seeing it on my screen. Okay. Let's do that. This one here. Yeah, so you got a hundred thousand patients, for instance, in this node. Okay. How does it relate to these other things? Yep. I see. So someone can tell me a little bit about. Um, so if I am a doctor, right, or a nurse, and I am looking at this, and I select my patient, how I, I should see? You know, I, I can input. Can I imp should I be inputting the, the like for example their age or sex and all that stuff going around and from left yeah. to right? I think thoughts like you you're sitting on this treasure trove of data about all of your patients, kind of a okay. population health dream here. And the EHR has collected all of this type of data, and usually what you get is just a huge table of information. Yep. You have to put a ton of filters and slicers on it. Um, and at some point you're really just trying to get to can I find the right group or cohort of patients that might be uh, th the next people for us to do some outreach to? Or maybe we have a brand new mm. therapy medication on the on the market, and it's great for patients with CHF. How many do we have? And if we were going to decide to do some outreach, do we have enough patients to, to make this mm. either worthwhile or make a big impact? And uh, that's what I'm trying to go for with this one is, I want you to slice and dice it a little bit. Maybe you know that they have to be over the age of 40. Um, mm. Where should I find these patients? Mm. And do I have enough in this particular category? Or, you know, it's only approved for uh, Georgia. You know, I have to be in Dalton State to get out there and, and get this particular therapy. I have mm. to drive across the border to get this type of thing. Do we have enough patients in our overall system um, to find that right group. And this is something that, you know, that was the, the promise of EHRs from the get-go. Let's use all this data, try to get you to a point where you can see across the board how familiar or how comparatively similar are some of your patients based on all of that data. Because maybe you can take care of more of them all at once. Correct. If you think about it, and this is just, I don't know why it came to my brain right now. If you think about it, this could be related to the previous uh, chart that we got from Dalton, because here are all the questions or the things that you can slice that information that we were talking about, gender, sex, I mean, I'm sorry, sex, uh, age, you know, right. like uh, if, if they, if the, where are their, what is the residence from, where are they from? So, so that they, do we know more about the data, you know, like their health literacy and things like that. So it's very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. One of the questions that I'm sure seems weird when you fill out your medical surveys mm -hmm. is what was your education level? You're treating me for a, a cut on my wrist. Why do you need to know yeah. whether I got through high school or college? Well, that is one of the number one drivers a relationship correlation to health literacy is that um, what I what I like about the sand key and it just flows into context is king. I've got to be able to see the relationship between dimensions, um, and, and yet the sand key also shows you individual sizes like a pie chart would. So mm -hmm. you can instantly see there's a whole lot more yeses than nos. There's a whole lot more hypertensions than not. I don't see exact percentages unless I hover over it um, mm -hmm. and could show that. But I can certainly see that immediate relationship. Um, one of the things uh, that I like about this particular um, visual extension for Click is that you see the drop down arrows by that primary disease family and things like that. Because I may say, look, I, I'm having a hard time, Joe, tracking these seven dimensions without a back massage from the <laughs> left to the right. Let me reorder those so that I can see these two next to each other instead. And uh, then I'm right. in business, right? Because now I can dig in 
and I can see the relationships that I am pers personally interested in, not just those that Joe said, hey, here's the big shiny dot I want you to see. It's I want you to get involved with the data. I want you to find your story. Um, and, and that story may be, hey, now go do your clinical trial with this set of patients um, mm -hmm. so that you're most likely to succeed or most likely to have the best cross-representation. Um, so it, 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 I, I think it just it provides so much across dimensions without being too clutterful um, although the lower data literacy levels, they're going to have a trouble starting out <laughs> yeah. with, with the seven dimensions. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Zach Geminani had shown me in a uh, meetup before mm -hmm. was a site that showed a very small starting visual, like a two dimension, just two dimensions for a CN key. Mm. And, and then it would kind of lead down to like a three and then mm -hmm. it would lead to a fourth so that I could grow my literacy level in the same interesting. application, mashup, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that I could grow if I had never seen it before, it would be easy for me to immediately, okay, how many yes or no from Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but especially being able to hover there makes it really nice and interactive and just makes you want to play all day long. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you just want to play with the thing. Joe, uh, can I have something for you as a question if you want to read it in here on the screen? Um, so the entire bar forward and backward from CHF um, are fully highlighted correct. And displaying the number breakdowns from something else uh, before or after would be more insightful than just seeing the category. It's a good point. Yeah, um, like turning on all of the values so we can see for each node. I think that's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. And then you're... And that you're, was where you had clicked five. on CHF to narrow it down. So ah, right. Yep. Uh, I'm in and it. I, I, and then I made you move back. <laughs> ah, right. Let's grab that one. I think I, I zoomed in maybe. Go back, go forward. Grab CHF again. A little oh, Erica. Erica, let us know in the chat if you want anything else that for um, Joe to answer about this. Very good question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Maybe we'll just go back to the beginning. But yeah, I, I think that's a good point. I, you could cater to both sides, right? If I had. This is the visualization, but there's some numbers, people. You, can you please just tell me how many CHF patients we have? That's what I care about. So we turn on a little thing there that says 21, uh, 210,000 people have both. Um, so, yeah, it is very interactive at that. And where I was coming from was, you know, you might have, this is only seven. There's hundreds if not thousands of different characteristics that a patient could have and, and what is a researcher. Uh, and sometimes it would be that, you know, the doctor sitting there, if they're on a, if they're an informaticist, for instance, and they do want to do research across the board, which ones do they put on the screen? What's interesting? It's going to change. And as a data developer, dashboard developer, I'm not going to want to put uh, only these seven and lock it in. They just, They'll ask somebody and, you know, I'm going to go ask Karen. She knows how to run a report. She's going to give me the different seven. And then you're just constantly waiting. So um, I'm hoping, you know, with data literacy as well, more people can just be comfortable grabbing something else. And they're going to use their their intuition education to mm -hmm. say, you know what? I really care about uh, the race and ethnicity part or health literacy scores. Yeah. Somebody else might not care about that. So. I think that's yep. where data can be really, really interesting and uh, and change things up across the board. Save lives like we're talking about. If we can get yeah. to that answer faster, we can get the therapy to more patients quicker. We know where to kind of pull the right levers. And, and, yeah. and with a thousand healthcare points of data for one person for one encounter, if we even can agree on what the word encounter means, <laughs> um, it's almost like that would become overwhelming to someone writing reports or visuals to constantly have it changing 
to where they might just say not another report yeah. um but driving up data literacy among health people um is as important to me as driving health literacy among mm -hmm. data people um, mm -hmm. yeah. because i have got to get them to want to be interactive mm -hmm. because there's there's a thousand points I, I can't constantly end meetings with oh can you add a different one next meeting Let, let's come back and have lasagna again next week <laughs> give me a new report and oh by the way please remember the previous 85 reports i've given you so that you have a context when I show you the new one. Oh, and by the way, that patient has been discharged from the hospital. We'll probably never see him again. And so there's really nothing you can do to help that patient. But think about all these things going forward. It just reports don't work in the healthcare world. They do need that, you know, to Yama's port really at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It needs to be more real time. The faster you can get this insight to somebody, mm -hmm. um, they're still going to use a ton of historical data. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. But if the patient's sitting there and they're, hey, doc, I have hypertension, CHF, diabetes, I'm on this medication, this thing, that data is in the system to say, well, you're just like 10,000 other patients. Mm -hmm. Let's see what works for them. Right. Normally, it's not that. It's, you know, see you for your next visit. Hope, uh, hope everything goes well with your new medications. And we'll see you in a month, if not right. sooner. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's another great use for sand keys. Um, for those patient flows because people can be lumped in. And then if you looked to the far right, um, as Aaron was talking about, hey, this is the end of the story, right? That, that yes and no could just as easily be good outcome, bad outcome. Correct, correct. How did correct. I get to the good outcome versus yeah. getting to the bad outcome? Is there a giant pattern somewhere in the middle of that clinical workflow? Yeah. Do you think, Joe, this is just my brain uh, thinking about how to make this better. Do you think that it will, it could make sense to start on the left without showing the right? And then it's like you're answering questions, right? Mm -hmm. So you go to the first one, I answer a question and give me just a piece of the data visualization, the, the first piece. I answer another question, adds to it, and I keep adding to the right going instead of seeing all at the same time. Yeah. Pieces of it. That's interesting. Like, like, and then that way, uh, because I think that people could get less confusing to them. And also they could be more into it to trying to try the tool, right? By just seeing a piece of it. And then I answer another question. I get another piece. I answer another question. And it's just like becoming something that is become, you know, like it's like building a house. And at the end, you get your answer on the it's, right. It's a really good point uh, that it, it could get you to that point. Uh, and see that information. But what we often find is that sometimes the, the, the most important part is where that data isn't there. It's mm -hmm. where, oh, the, the, you know, I'm in Alabama, but, or actually Florida, mm -hmm. I'm looking at Florida. I immediately see in the sand key that I have no mm -hmm. patients between the age of 18 and 24. Mm -hmm. It's kind of grayed out. Okay. That to a doctor mm -hmm. is maybe even more important than, oh, I have a bunch of patients that are over 65. I knew that. What I didn't know was I have no candidates, 18 to 24. I so I, I sometimes I argue that I don't want to lose that context of seeing the yes and the no to every question. Because mm -hmm. I want to find those patients that aren't on that medication. Or I want to find that patient that mm -hmm. hasn't been diagnosed yet, but has all of the characteristics around it that all of those other patients do. Mm -hmm. so um, and I, think, I think there's a, there's a good point here from Len Mm -hmm. Um, it may not be the doctor, <laughs> yeah. Right with us. Yes, it's. I, I, th I think Len's point is a, is a really valid one. This would be the clinical mm -hmm. researcher doing it on behalf of the doc. The, the doc's right. gonna say, Hey, Joe, get me this. Um, and they would they would come through and play with this. And then to your point, those people would understand, Hey, here's what's excluding you, you asked. It for this, but I want you to understand something. Mm -hmm. You're about to make a decision based on 2% of our population. Are you sure that's, are you sure that's really what you meant when you asked me for that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, the audience to lens point two is super critical in 
everything, I think in every industry, but especially healthcare, because mm -hmm. you're gonna have the attention of an ER doc for mere seconds. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna sit and do this. What they wanna know is, there's a patient I have in front of me right now. These are all the red indicators going off. I need to fix this. You get into family medicine, maybe it's, oh, this patient has been coming in a lot and who haven't we seen in a while? They care about that. This would be that step back researcher I got a bunch of, you know, I have a new therapy available. I'm going to have to figure out, uh, do we have enough people to start a study, a clinical trial, um, and get these patients in and pro potentially change things up? Right. Correct. Right. No, absolutely. You know, I, I think this is definitely, you have to make sure you're talking to the right audience here. I like I, one of the things that I like about the, the dashboard that I, I don't remember seeing before it's the concept of having the filter on top of each part, right? Like that filter that you can see on top of each one that mm. controls that only area I like. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's easy to yeah. understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And that ability to move the columns. Mm -hmm. it, 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 oh, it, okay. makes, it makes me want to play. Okay. So oh, yeah. Columns. Okay, right. great. So, yeah, I, I was late to joining the meeting. I was playing around with this <laughs> right before. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I got to run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's that interactive. He was playing around. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. still working on it. I was trying to save lives. That's really I, hot really off the presses. I love it, Joe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we pretty much we we did it. We we came to the end. We're almost there at four o'clock. Um. I wanted to say uh, thank you so much for everyone. I mean, thank you so much for Delton and Joe to to be part of this, to to share your 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 knowledge in healthcare data, to be part of what we're trying to do here with this show, three at three, to improve you know data visualization. That's what all we were. That's the that's the, the why. That's the mission here. We just want to improve data visualization, especially healthcare data, right? Because mm -hmm. like we said at the beginning, healthcare data can save lives. And um, and we want. I don't know if you have any, any else, anything else you want to share about your experience today, of course, and what, what we learned here today, uh, any of your perspectives, and uh, but what, what what else can we do with healthcare? Data? How can we get better about doing this? Right? Anything that you want to say? I, I think iron sharpens iron, and <laughs> um, I, I think one of the things that Joe and I have both been involved in is a number of meetups around the world, yeah, mm -hmm. trying to get people to understand share your visualization we don't need to be defensive about this right no mm -hmm. it, it's i it, it, data can be ambiguous and i meant this but you interpreted that i need to know your interpretation and, and understanding that visualizations like analytics are going to be iterative Correct. don't assume that it's like every other it process joe asked me the question i finish it I say I'm 100% done, and if Joe has any more questions, it's a change request that I got to wait for eight months to, to get the answer to. Like, like assume it, um, it is going to be iter iterative. Yeah, and I, I would say there's nothing more personal than healthcare. So if you can get your own data, one should be a little bit easier uh, than somebody else's healthcare data um and start playing around with it in the you know tools of your choice and seeing oh you know what i i really i don't run for one but i don't walk nearly as much when it's raining my my health is related to the weather <laughs> and i see that very clearly but the health data in general is actually very easy to get aggregated stuff um mm -hmm. the government agencies put out a lot of stuff kaggle has a ton of great mm -hmm. healthcare data that people can just start getting into and there's there's all kinds of, uh, of fun things that you can do with it and then find some really critical things that you didn't think about like health literacy. Um, correct, and correct, what's correct. going on and disparities that we have, you know, at here across the globe, uh, no matter what, there's all kinds of things you can pick apart and we need more people that know data viz and healthcare. Mm -hmm. It's, correct, correct. Uh, there's a lot of jobs available. We <laughs> talk to a lot yeah. of hospitals. They are, they are aching for people right now that yeah. can help them understand their data, let alone just staff. Um, correct, so correct, correct. if you're not, if you need to choose a degree, get into healthcare, you're going to have a job forever. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. And it's so important. What I mean, we, we all the time we're looking at data visualizations where we're looking for data online and we're trying to visualize it. 
what what could be better than visualize your own data data from your own health how are you doing how are you tracking are you getting better what is your cholesterol or whatever you know oh, what yeah. could it be better cooler than that you know so because you can improve yourself you say you can save your own life now exactly so, so, so um I, we have Gabriela from uh, the chat she said what would you recommend for doing visualizations for integration health and status Mm. Oh, oh, wait. We have another one. Um, sure. I'm not sure health. if integration health maybe mean integrating health and status into like the EH EHRs like Epic. Okay. Um, right, because physicians, clinicians could look at a single point. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I'm entering this order. Mm -hmm. Now there's 80,000 other things I might need to know. How do I see something here that's like a flashing light? Um, and, and so that's, um, I, I think one of the things I've seen in a presentation from Joe is that if analytics is in the workflow of the person mm -hmm. who's already doing their day job, they're 15 times more likely to take an action on it. That, gotcha. I, and I think that was the right number. Yeah, that's right. Um, 15. <laughs> seared in my head. So that, that presentation has always been impactful to me. Like, I, I have to help customers drive to mm -hmm. putting visualizations where their day job is, not ask them to become a click dork and want to find a website with 85 apps, 20 pages in it, 18 sheets in it to try to get an answer. Right. It, it needs to be where they're already working um, in order to do things. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's so important. Right. If you think about it. This this data more than any other data. Right. In other data, sales data or something, we're we're taking action to create profit. But in this one, we're taking action to save life, which is right. very different. Yep. Um, and, and I think that's the, the message here. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, in any sales data, I'm looking at average sale average time to sale. If, if I told Joe his average blood pressure was 100, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, right? exactly. like, you don't average blood pressures. <laughs> like, if I got a 180, I don't care that I might have had a 40 before in the average yeah. job. The 180 yeah. is scary. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. So there's yeah, I used to weigh 150 pounds a long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> like middle school. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So we're almost we're here at the annual and um, follow us. And next week, we're going to have a great one next week. We're probably going to do a cryptocurrency data next week. So that's going to be a big one. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. And Halloween, next week. Yeah. Halloween is going to be amazing. I already have two customs here. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm going to put it on, of course, and it's going to be a lot of fun next month. So I can't wait for Halloween. That's my, one of my favorite things in the year. So next week, next month for Halloween. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah, for having me. Have a great day. That was fun.